Oh my god. <laughs> go ahead, this is a family program. Is it? We're drinking beer. <laughs> the charlotte buzz where we drink beer from local breweries while telling stories about the neighborhoods they're from i'm chrissy and this is true and today we are drinking a beer from legion who won the buzz bracket hey but before we get into how they won and what that all looked like i'm gonna need some beer in my glass yeah so uh can we also for anybody who's watching this on YouTube, and if you're not watching this on YouTube, go look at it or go look at a Legion uh, growler or half growler because this is a fancy as crap like water bottle. Vacuum sealed. Vacuum sealed. It'll keep stuff cold for a full day. It'll keep stuff hot for 12 hours. And it was expensive and I didn't understand why until they brought it out. And I am in love with this sucker. Yeah, it's pretty fancy. <laughs> and inside that fancy... Half growler is Juicy J, the mm -hmm. Legion staple. Yes. I'm going to still um, spill this, <laughs> but carry on. It's a 6.3% American IPA, um, Mosaic, El Dorado, and Cascade Comet hops join in harmony to produce a juicy tropical treat with a distinct dry finish. Mm -hmm. um, they say down here that each of these hops will dance along your tongue hey. and gather for the grand finale. <laughs> well, that is fun. I mean, I'm not sure what that means. I but. don't know, but man, this is an awesome bottle. There is still a tiny smidge in there. Okay. Did you tell us how what the percentage of this is? Yeah, 6.3. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give this sucker a taste. I mean, I've had it several times, but... Yeah, I mean... I'm sure most people listening to this have. It is a staple. Okay, yeah. Um, crisp. Fruity. I think I'm already biased because I'm pretty sure I already know it was pineapple flavors. I'm not sure if you said that. Mm, I did not say that. Maybe it was a mango flavor. Is that what you said? Um, I read off the menu some sort of tropical I fruit. I didn't say anything about uh, what type. I yeah, said well, tropical I kinda, treat. Okay. I think the menu at Legion says mango. What Sometimes they have like a mango juicy they J, do. though. They do, yeah. We did also try a blood orange one. Um, IPA. It'll drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it crisp and fruity. I don't know. Give me, you sip it. Give me some better details. <laughs> Can I do that? You can try. I feel like it's one of the lighter IPAs. Maybe I've gotten a little too yeah. used to Dippa's, but yeah, I think so. Because I mean, it's definitely got that classic IPA. You know, a little bit of bitter bitterness. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, I don't drink. <laughs> I mean, it's just solid, mm -hmm. I think. I, I mean, mean, yeah, it's definitely a staple of Legion. It's a staple of the Plaza Midwood area. And it's definitely a greater Charlotte staple. Yeah. And now that we've moved past the uh, the snow and have gotten into mm -hmm. warmer weather, this wouldn't be a bad one to drink on a hot day. That's very true. It's not too heavy. We did have some of it on a nice snowy day a year yeah. and three months ago. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was, if you uh, listen to, I want to say the last podcast, we ended up, uh, for my birthday last year, there was three days of snow, and so we ended up at Legion, because it was one of the few places open. Mm -hmm. And they are open all the time, and open at two o'clock. Which is on a Monday. Right. Nonetheless. A bunch of breweries anyway. have been either closed on Monday, or don't open until four or later. So, props to you, Legion. No wonder you're a family fave. And we had... 
some pretzels or mm. a large one large pretzel okay i don't know how i turned into a pretzel and beer cheese snob but somehow i did and that is like one of my quests in the city is to find the best pretzel and beer cheese and granted i realize there's it's just all based on personal preference like you much prefer the like baked cheese mm-hmm. and i want the creamy sort of nacho cheese type of deal but oh goodness that pretzel and beer cheese and i know it's like qc pretzels or yeah queen um, city pretzel yeah. um but oh my god that was good i want more of that we should yeah. have got some of that for this podcast too yeah and it was like torso size mm-hmm. it was incredible yeah it was worth every penny of that sucker um all right so <laughs> while we're sitting here breaking this down let's talk about how legion became the 2019 inaugural buzz bracket champion yeah Ba-da! as if it's a okay. big shock because anybody who's paying attention has been voting online so we announced it on monday um during halftime of the ncaa game which was a bit of a letdown but whatever you weren't pulling for virginia nah Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, if you're going to lose to a 16 seed, should you really win it? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> They're also boring to watch. You know, that's what I hear. Most of the time. They picked it up there at the end of that game, but that defense just hold the ball till the last second of the shot clock. Mm-hmm. Not into that. Mm-mm. I like my Duke Carolina running gun back and forth. Non-stop mm-hmm. action. <laughs> you get bored a little easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we went. It was a really fast weekend because instead of five days of voting, y'all had two and then three to get to this final game. So mm-hmm. we started the weekend with the final pour, which was Wooden Robot versus Resident Culture and Legion versus Heist. Mm-hmm. And so after two full days of voting there, we ended up with Wooden Ro- Robot beating out Resident Culture, which quite frankly floored me. It did floor you. I mean, I was surprised too, but you were flipping out. Yeah. I did not. And it's, it's the same thing as the Noda. Like, I did not see Wooden Robot beating Noda. And then I was like, I don't know, Wooden Robot, they might keep going. I, I don't know. And you're like, chill out, Resident Culture. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. And then, <laughs> holy crap. It was tight, but I mean, it was like 25 votes difference, maybe, but still, that was just, that still floored me. Uh, 17. So we ended up with an upset for the five seed beating out the three seed. And I don't know if you have any more comments because I was about to jump to the next one. I don't want to cut you off before. Um, So then we had number five seed Legion against number two seed heist and i'm not as surprised at this overthrow um that Mm -hmm. legion out overtook heist um i'm a little surprised but not majorly surprised um because heist did come in there and start promoting and so i thought it might be a little closer but um like i said both of them were actually promoting on social media uh, both of them now have that second location that's come out in the last year or so. Um, and true, so true. they've got kind of expanded territories to be reaching. Um, but I guess the longevity of promoting won out for Legion in the end. Um, and they came out ahead by like 30 points. So it was still relatively close. Yeah. But it was to me it was just really interesting that we had two upsets and ended up with the final matchup being battle of the five seeds battle of the five yep get it any comment on the final pour from you sir um i'm still heartbroken about my chicken and waffle tacos (laughs) losing uh it's a beer bracket it's not a food bracket well it's a brewery brewery and what is the most important aspect coming out of a brewery Chicken and waffle tacos. Yeah. <laughs> brews and what to pair with those brews. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken waffle tacos. <laughs> that would be your answer for anything. Then. I mean, they're pretty good. <laughs> but, yeah, but I mean that pretzel dough and that cheese. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, but you like the baked cheese better, you yeah, weirdo. Yeah, heist. You weirdo. It was the battle of the beer cheese there. But yeah, I, Legion deserved it. They had, you know, when they promoted it early, mm-hmm. all the people that saw their stuff had skin in the game probably because their people filled out brackets. Yes. So they were all about voting. That is very true. Um, and yeah. So then after two days of voting there, we came down to our final matchup, Battle of the Five Seeds, Wooden Robot versus Legion. And obviously, Legion won out. And Legion won out big in this matchup. Yeah. They doubled Wooden Robot's votes in those three days. And I'm not exactly surprised, but I guess I'm slightly surprised just based on how impactful wooden robot had been the last two matchups that's true that yeah. you know they came out of nowhere in my opinion to take down noda to take down resident culture two heavy hitters heavy contenders for the championship yeah. that by the time they got to the final losing it by half was a bit surprising but ultimately yeah they hadn't promoted at all i'm not even sure this is on their radar so, I have to say, in the long run, I am really glad that Legion won because they were, I would say, our first adopter and promoter of mm-hmm. this from very day one. And I really love that their persistence has paid off for them and that the Golden Growler is going to go to a brewery who really will appreciate it. Yeah, when we send them a message, they won't be like, what you talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was something I thought about when we got to this final matchup. I was like, if Wooden Robot pulls this out, we're going to show up at their place with the trophy, and they're going to be like, what the frick is this uh, crap? Why are we supposed to do with this? Fill it with beer? Right. They would be so confused. So <laughs> on that superficial, but also like just really, you know, you want to give a prize to somebody who truly yeah. appreciates it. So, uh, so that's really awesome. I'm really excited for them. Congratulations, Legion. You've earned it. You're incredible. And you will forever hold the title of the very first Buzz Bracket winner. Yeah, can't nobody take that away. Yeah. So, thank you for that. And we appreciate you immensely. So, also, something pretty cool is, as we got closer to the end, we got a little more nervous of, what happens if the people who actually submitted brackets, what if we end up with, you know, a dozen, two dozen people who tie? And we had some fun ideas for drinking games and different tiebreakers but there's also a limit you can't we're not ready for that right we're not (laughs) ready to have 30 people here trying to do a chugging contest in the middle of legion like um that would have been really stressful and you know this kind of all came together very quickly very last minute and so um we were pleasantly surprised to find out that there was shockingly only one winner of the bracket and either way, even if it had been Wooden Robot, there would have been one person who had won it. A different guy. Right, a different person. Yeah. And then with the five points that they got for the win for Legion, a different person bumped up. So yeah. either way, it would have been just one winner. But it was the final matchup that gave our actual winner the edge. Yeah. So big congratulations to Gray. We have reached out to him. He will be getting a $100 to Legion Brewery. And... We'll get all those details to everybody involved later, but, um, yeah, it was just a yeah. really cool experience. Really excited for, uh, for Gray, for Legion, mm-hmm. and for next year, and how we're gonna make it so much better with when more you, time to plan it you out. Get forty-five points. Or, or 48. forty-eight. Forty-eight. And what he missed two. Yeah. That yeah. was it. Oh, he missed two out of the... Impressive. Be- it, considering yeah. how many random upsets we had, and like I said, like shocking wooden robot shenanigans, yeah. and I- I'm impressed. And you I'm had really to pick impressed. every top seed to win the first round, which sounds easy, but in my head, I'd have been like... Got to get a 12 over 5. There has to be at least one upset. Right. Has to be. But there right. wasn't. We had a Cinderella in there. We had twelve over fives. Like, yeah, yeah. So I, 
I came in what hundred and something mm-hmm. <laughs> out uh, of nearly four fifty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I I did all right. You're just excited that you beat me, and you're just yeah. trying to tell the world. Yeah. I beat her. Not by much. Enough. <laughs> So, with that, um, I want to talk just briefly about Legion themselves, mm-hmm. itself, the folk of Legion, Legion and the brewery. Uh, so, as we mentioned in our very first matchups, they were created in 2015. I almost said 2005. Whew. 2015. They were the first brewery in the Plaza Midwood area, and they have recently opened their second location in South Park. Their entire um, branding is about friends and beer, which if you are looking at, on the YouTube channel, you'll see that is their logo says Legion Brewing, and then it has their actual logo with the arrows, and then underneath it says friends and beer. And that's just really what they're all about, is bringing the community together, bringing great craft beer to people, and just building a community. It's kind of their B- whole... Like building a legion. What? Well done. Uh, So they say that sharing good beer with friends is one of life's greatest pleasures. And the two arrows in their logo are actually a Native American symbol of two tribes coming together. And to them, that means friendship. Mm. And so that's they wanted that to be the very foundation of who they are and what they are is friendship and bringing people together. Hmm. And so, with that, um, I think it is also very fitting that they are the inaugural winning of the Buzz Bracket in this building community and bringing people together. I thought that was really cool. But I also just wanted to share a few comments from the crowd. Uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. The final day of voting, we put up on Instagram uh, for both Wooden Robot and for Legion and said, convince us why this brewery should win this final matchup. And so... For Legion, a few of the comments were, best environment, really care about the craft and neighborhood locals. Another was supporting local and focused on creating true friendship. Another said, it feels like coming home. Even if you walk in on your own, you leave with a family. And then we had... And then there were just several that were, you know, best beer, best vibes, best atmosphere, best staff, sexiest bartenders. That was a real one. Um, All kinds of just... I feel like a bartender wrote that. The the amount of ones that just said Juicy J, Nuff said, um, all of the above, Mm -hmm. um, really great ones. But I thought they had just some really, um, like, really deep answers for a little Instagram thing. Didn't they also say they throw an awesome party? (laughs) <laughs> well, someone who commented said yeah. it was great and they would throw an awesome party if they won. So, mm-hmm. Legion, mm-hmm. let's make it happen. Let's uh, throw that party, huh? You have my attention. I'm in. I was like, I don't know how we'll contribute other than an awesome trophies, Be there. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just show up. Yes. That's enough, right? I mean, it's all about bringing friends together. So let's do it. Let's have a party. Yeah. I mean, we got to become friends first with them. But Legion, I mean, let's be we friends. That. We like friends. Yeah. <laughs> We're idiots. Uh, but yeah, so that's Legion. I, like I said, I have a new um, connection. Love. Yeah. I appreciate them. I respect them. I am uh, very grateful for their participation and support in the bracket. Yeah. I am very glad that they won because of it and show how I'm glad that they received what they deserved based on their efforts. And uh, overall, I really love their mission and what they're trying to do as a brewery. So I think that's great. Cool. So with that. We are going to dive deep into the Plaza Midwood area for a third time on this Raise Hill, Braisdale. <laughs> that was con. Oh, I was like, what? I was like, that was the Concord episode. Three. I see what you did there. Yeah, took me a second. I'm slow. 
Golly. Yankees. Sheesh. Don't understand their NASCAR. <laughs> I'm from Poconos. Pocono 500. Yeah, fake race, right? It's like a triangle or something. It Ain't is. Ain't that oval. It's really weird. It is. We mean it's only got three turns. Yeah, it's really strange. <laughs> it is super strange. That is not a lie. Um, but yeah, so our first episode that was leg- Legion-focused, that was Plaza-focused, we went deep in history. The second, we went current slash future. And thankfully, I guess, we haven't covered Legion until this point, because I don't know what we would have done had they won and we'd already done it. But I now I guess we're going to see uh, potentially somewhere in the middle that we're going to fall to uh, do some storytelling. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let you tell us the story first. Sweet. All right, so I'm going to talk about the Van Landinghams. Okay. Quite a long name. Uh, yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, Ralph Van Landingham. <laughs> Say that top five times fast. <laughs> Maybe later. Ralph Van Landingham born was born in Charlotte on November 9th. Hey. 1875, just 114 years before, before one Drew Golden came into the world. Hey. You know, also 114 years before the Berlin Wall came down. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that the same day you were born? It was. Hmm. Coincidence? No. Turned down walls since birth. <laughs> um, he was the son of John Henry. Taron wombs and Taron walls. Oh my God. <laughs> This is a family program. Is it? We're drinking beer. (laughs) He was the son of John Henry Van Landingham and Mary Oates Spratt Van Landingham. That name I've heard before. I don't know from where. The Mary Oates Spratt. Mm -hmm. Um, Spratt sounds kind of familiar, but I'm not, not anywhere I could even remotely begin to pin down. Yeah. I don't know. Um, his father owned a cotton brokerage firm. Oh. And he would later join that same firm and become a very successful cotton broker. Hmm. But I'm not real sure what a cotton broker is. I was going to ask, and then I was like, I don't think he knows. Um, I think it's like... Mm-hmm. I think it's like a... Realtor's. You just uh, just because it has the same word doesn't mean it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, um, like a they cotton either, field realtor. Yeah, well, not for like yeah, the actual land, but sold cotton mm-hmm. to other cotton folk. Okay. Like uh, they took it from the farmers mm-hmm. to give to the mills. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe a middleman, a liaison. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't know, or maybe it's just a fancy way. Of saying plantation, but in the city. Maybe. I don't know. I can just see him with like a top. with like a eight by ten shed with like just cotton in it, and like people coming by <laughs> and like buying handfuls. Yeah, that's how I think it went down. Naturally. <laughs> so Susie, Ralph's soon-to-be wife, um, was born Susie Harwood, and in Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, she later moved to the south when uh, her dad got a job with the railroad. Oh, ended the railroad. Up, yeah, ended up being a high official. Was he in charge of naming them? Because he needs a smack in the face. Yeah, it was like Florida East Railroad Company or something like that. Hmm. So I don't, I don't, you know, if he was in charge, he wasn't. He was just as creative as the other railroad people. Awesome. Um. But I guess that pays well to I mean, be a high official for a railroad. Sure. Um, In that time, for sure. Yeah. So her father, after her father's death, mm-hmm. she ended up moving with her mother to Atlanta, um, where she headed a company which built the first fireproof hotel in the state of Georgia. This is another thing that I don't know what that is. I was going to say, I was like, okay, first of all, rock on for a woman leading this in that time. In early 1900s. Yeah, so one... Or late 1800s. Rock the heck on to her yeah. for that. Two, 
you say the first fireproof hotel as if there are multiple and you said yeah. in georgia as if there are those elsewhere in the country yeah yeah and i would like to know where on the planet you can find a fireproof building now because two i things. don't know that such a thing exists yeah two things i have to say about this either it was just 100 percent concrete mm -hmm. beds n no linens just concrete bed concrete walls mm -hmm. or it was like a titanic situation mm. where it's like unsinkable mm -hmm. it's I fireproof you. I hear you. And then it wasn't. Because, yeah, I was going to say it also depends on the time. But, I mean, my head goes, well, okay. Recently been watching documentary on the Netflix mm -hmm. about the 2000s, being a little nostalgic to some of my high school college days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, 9-11 is going to pop up in the 2000s. And yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm thinking. It's like, obviously, no one said the building was fireproof. Yeah. But thinking of you get enough heat and the right conditions and metal's going to melt and metal's going to crumble. And Unless you're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The government totally blew that ish up. Yeah. Have totally. You, have you heard of Building 7? What? <laughs> but, yeah. Coming from someone who grew up an hour outside of New York City, an hour from the towers, and our local people had to go there, and my entire neighborhood was commuters in there, I got a lot of thoughts about that kind of crap. I mean... But, nonetheless... It's conspiracy for a reason. <laughs> yes. It's not just... Yeah, yeah. Truth. What? Yeah. But... <laughs> that should be the new series of a conspiracy. The new title of a conspiracy theory, like documentary, is like, truth. Yeah. Or like truth. <laughs> or like a conspiracy that conspiracy theories aren't really Con con That conspiracy theories are so out there because they're actually hiding the truth of what actually happened. Like they put out a, like... So conspiracy theories are conspiracy theories... To cover up the reality of what actually happened. So what we know happened, the conspiracy theory to be like, those people are crazy to drive us back toward what they want us to think. But there's really a third thing even yeah. deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, like, all I'm saying kill is. Osama Bin Laden? You never know. That's another that's another. Episode. I mean, that, yeah, that whole thing happened so quick. They Just didn't get his official the, uh, ship, right? Throat. Yeah. Please. Or you they'd have parades where they just rode them through town. Right? Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, <laughs> given the right conditions, and nothing is fireproof. Yeah. I mean <laughs> bringing us back. And maybe they were just talking about the building itself, yeah. not the Right. There's a million things I mean, that could have been directing it towards. People were spontaneously combustible. Mm -hmm. There's stories conspiracy theories on that of mm -hmm. people spontaneously combusting. Um so how do they I account mean, for that? I am sure under any <laughs> set of the exact right circumstances, stuff can happen. Yeah. So anyways. Yes. <laughs> um, so she's in Atlanta. Um, headed that company, Fireproof Hotel. Uh, Ralph and Susie meet in Atlanta. Not sure what Ralph was doing there. Um, he chew. I guess he's got broker things to do. You know, brokers got a broke. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not wrong. Yeah. So, uh, couldn't really find out what he was doing at that time, but mm -hmm. they were married in 1901 in Susie's Hotel. The Majestic Hotel. Oh. Or, the is not part of the name. It's called Majestic Hotel. Okay. Um. <laughs> I also come from the Poconos where there was like Caesar's Palace was like a resort in the area and so it's like the known for the big champagne, champagne glass like mm -hmm. jacuzzi tubs in the rooms and stuff and that's all I'm envisioning is this like and I realize it's significantly earlier in history but like the 70s style like really weirdly bougie but like so strangely bougie type of thing mm -hmm. That's like just the beds picture that you I've put got. coins in to shake. Yeah, kind of thing. like, yeah. And I realize obviously none of that was there in that time, but I feel like for that time, that's just the image I'm getting is some sort of really weirdly out there type of place. Or it was just majestic. As if. Quit trying to make up conspiracy majestic theorists, a theories on Majestic Hotel. I'm doing it well. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I should have looked up Majestic Hotel to see if it's still mm. there. Didn't do it. Fair um, enough. Maybe I can add some text if I figure something out. Will you forget? No. 
Okay. Um, so they ended up moving to Charlotte in 1907 and initially lived with Ralph's parents. So it's not a millennial thing. No, yeah, this used to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess. See, that's what the millennial generation is doing. They're just trying to bring back traditional values where several generations of the family lived under one roof. Yeah. Bam. Mic drop. Or maybe you're welcome. People's known all along that this happens, and there's just conspiracy theories out there, or the social medias, <laughs> and just yeah, put it all out there for everybody to talk about. Who knows? Carry on. Um. So I guess Susie just just couldn't deal. <laughs> I mean, um, that's fair. With the in laws, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> so they end up buying a house on Central Avenue in Plaza. Hey. Um. Susie was known to be the life of the party. Hey. Like to have large gatherings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I guess she couldn't, she just couldn't deal with the size of the house. Couldn't hold enough people. Oh, I was like, too big? Mm-hmm. Too small. Um, party girl. Okay. So she got gathered $6,000. In that time? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And listen to what she bought with it. Oh, goodness. Three... Lots, slots, lots six through nine at an up and coming Chatham Estates in Plaza Midwood. It was a street car suburb. Uh, yeah, suburb of street cars. <laughs> um, and those lots were located at the intersection of Belvedere and the Plaza. Wow. So they built them a house. Uh, I think it's like four acres of land. I mean, that's a lot. Um, that's, mm, yeah. Okay. Six, nine lots. You know, she was just like, hey, I need space mm-hmm. for my large parties. Mm-hmm. She's trying to Gatsby her life. Yep. Before Gatsby was a thing. She was pre-Gatsby. <laughs> um, Innovator, this woman. Yeah. Trailblazer. So it seems like Susie's been like making the calls here. Um, but it seems like Ralph finally got to put in his two cents. Hmm. And he wanted the grounds um, to imitate the Appalachian Mountains. Interesting. I say say interesting because my first thought is you want to try to build a house on like a whole bunch of bumpy hills? Well. But then it was, well, is it, you know, let's build a house and then have like uh, landscaping that mimics yeah, the mountains? Yeah. Okay. So, um, they spent their summers, and Ralph spent his summers as a child in Linville, North Carolina. Whereabouts? Is Out there? west. Okay. Mountains. I mean, that makes sense. Um, Again, not if native. If you wouldn't asked, I would have told you exactly where it was at. I mean, that was good enough. I just, um, you know, not native. Needed a little directional yeah. assistance. So, from a child... He'd spend his summers out there, and him and Susie'd go out there. And uh, so they fell in love with the place. I guess she was okay with it. Mm-hmm. So they put up a lot of trees. Oh, okay. Right there, close to Boone. Okay. Grandfather Mountain. I've been there. Yeah, Linville Falls. I believe Michael's jumped off of there. Of course he has. <laughs> Michael's his brother. He does all the things. He's out yeah. of control. Yeah. Super athletic, super crazy. So... Um, so just the type of trees he brought in, um, real lush. So he wasn't trying to necessarily build mountains no, in no, his no. backyard, just trying to like the imitate gran- the, the greenery landscape. Of it. Yeah. So he's got okay. trees and okay. just real, I think there's a pond there. Okay. Um, I just wanted to be, feel like a, a mountain escape in Charlotte. Okay. I can dig that. So... I mean, if she gets a party house, that seems fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, interestingly enough about that, though, um, apparently there is a website that talks about trees in Charlotte. Hmm. And I learned through it, I will link it below because I don't remember what it's called. It's called, like, the Queen City Crowns or something like that. What's the top of a tree called? Oh, Canopy, I think mm-hmm. is what it's called. But it was like something like that. Like okay. had something to do with, yeah. Okay. So we talked about we'll interesting trees in Charlotte. Yeah, that's, I mean, Inter- who knew, but yeah. I'm interested. I mean, we'll have to further research some stuff in that. Yeah. Um, 
But they had, he had a coast redwood brought in, which is the same tree. Like a redwood, like a redwood forest. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Those are freaking huge. Yeah. I drove so, my pickup truck through one. Yeah. Through one. <laughs> like they cut holes out and it's a tourist attraction to drive a pickup truck through a tree. Yeah, but those trees tree. have been here for thousands of years. I mean, yes. So it's not that big yet. Sure, but. It could be. There could be like a single redwood <laughs> in Charlotte looking like the freaking Ray Road tree. <laughs> and then they're going to be so like vindicated. Like, yeah. say, say. <laughs> see, there's tall trees out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> by themselves. As everybody else just head shake of disappointment. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty interesting. Normally, I don't really care about trees. I mean, I, outside green stuff. Oxygen. You don't like none of that. Oxygen's cool and all. Mm -hmm. But like if you said, hey, like take a lift by the oak. Mm -hmm. Is that a big tree? Small tree? What kind of, you know, <laughs> what's going on? I don't mm -hmm. like, did you put a blue paint strip on it? Hey, blue blaze. Yeah. That's a brewery. I wouldn't know. Um, so I thought that was cool though, because yeah. they, they are not around here. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I want to know where that is and then drive around at random. Other side of the out. pond. If you go to this place, other side of the pond. Ah. Um, there's a picture of it on this website. Okay. Maybe we'll go check it out. I'm okay. And report back. I'm good with that. Um, so, another, whenever Ralph Jr. Okay. had the house later on, um, he brought in a guy from UNCC to like kind of redo the grounds kind of upkeep it and in his journal he said that volcanic matter was brought in to amend the soil for the tree i wish anybody listening to this podcast could just see my face right now what i mean I dang know. um is there i mean there's not even volcanic matter in cali like hawaii but not like California is not volcanic. I, I realize it's on the ring, see, they but put, it's not quite. They put air quotes around it. Okay. So he may have not been correct, but it looked like volcanic matter. <laughs> see, what, I had to reread this because at first I thought I read that Junior mm -hmm. called in this expert. And then it said in journals, in Junior's journal, he said volcanic matter. And I was like, oh, so Junior was a kid. Let me. Did they say that senior called this guy in? And mm -hmm. then it was like, no, junior called this guy in. So he's older. But it seemed like something that a kid would say. Mm -hmm. so okay. I don't know. But so it just seems like. A, they took very special care to do everything they could possible yeah. for this tree. Yeah. So I, it's okay. got to still be there. It's I think we be. definitely need to take a trip. Yeah. And it's called the Queen's Crown dot org, by hey. the way, if you want to check that out. Celebrating Charlotte's canopy. They got pictures, coordinates, the spread of the trees 40 foot. Nice. You know, species. I mean, they got stories about trees. Crazy. It must be interesting because, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know you, green stuff and outside <laughs> are not your jam. Yeah. Not one bit. That's all me. So so that's crazy. If you're interested, let's go play outside. I'm in. Yeah. I mean, I'll check it out if we can. Yeah. I'll tell you why it's questionable in a few minutes. Oh, no. Um, So, Ralph got his... Ralph got his Linville mountain-like mm -hmm. grounds. And Susie was finally able to throw her Gatsby-esque hey. parties. Pre-Gatsby parties. Um, But while she was doing this, she served in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to just list off things that she did. Okay. Quite a busy woman, sounded like. She served as regent. I don't know Fancy. who that is. Of the Halifax Convention Chapter. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Halifax is a place in Canada. Yeah. And a band, but okay. Daughters of the American Revolution. I guess she served as a regent. Okay. Um. She was chairman of the North Carolina Board of Approved Schools. Well, all right. President of the Board of St. Peter's Hospital. <laughs> okay. Is that like a precursor to CMC, a.k.a. Atrium? Because 
whatever. But. Funny you should say that. Oh, okay. Keep going. Um, but at St. Peter, where she served as president of the board of St. Peter's Hospital, she uh, financed the building of the emergency waiting room oh. and named it after her mother. Named it in honor of her mother. Okay. Um, and was a forerunner for the Carolinas Medical Center. Hey, called it. I'm, I mean, I guess she was just part of the original I mean, committee yeah, but to still. get it started. Um, awesome. She also received a personal commendation from President <laughs> Woodrow hey. Wilson for her supervision of the Red Cross Canteen at Camp Green during World War One. Rock on. This so, chick, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not like overly feminist i'm just like just feminist yeah. enough we're like yeah equal rights rock on like i know enough about you know 1920s and women's suffrage and elizabeth caddy stanton and susan b anthony and that whole shtick but this woman needs to be on that list she yeah. probably is and i just didn't remember her but rock yeah. on possibly um she's very like progressive in her time for sure yeah el presidente of a lot of things yeah. Um, she ran in the show, and especially that time, yeah. not bueno. Rock on, girl. Yeah. Um, the Charlotte News characterized her as a woman of rare gifts and a person of unmistakable quality. Hmm. Perhaps the most distinctive char characteristic um, of Miss Ralph Van Landingham, the newspaper asserted. <laughs> I guess I don't know really about that. Um, was the range and depth of her interests. Okay. So, she was well-rounded. And it seems like that. You yeah. know, board at a hospital, chairman of the board of North Carolina, board of Education, approved schools. Yeah. yeah. Daughters of American Revolution. So feminism, education, health, party girl. <laughs> yeah. Loved her parties. Allowed her husband to be an arborist. <laughs> yeah. And other things. Um. Yeah, he liked his trees and his cotton. Mm -hmm. You know, he, um, he, you know, she wasn't the only part of the family that went out. You know, he, uh, he was like a high standing person at St. Peter's Church. Okay. Um, helped around St. Peter's. I think St. Peter's is that one that's like a historic landmark in the middle of Charlotte, too. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. Cool. I'll have to double check. Okay. But I'm, it's, but they it's were still kind of, there in Charlotte. In their own way, they're kind of power couple. Yeah. I mean, they were able to like, one, in that time, being a power couple is unheard of because being a woman of yeah. any kind of power, equality yeah. is nothing. Like that's non-existent in yeah. this time. I would say though, if you have a powerful woman back then, it was probably a power couple. I mean, sure. You needed to have a man yeah. who was willing to, to support stand, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because legally, she had no ability to become that if her husband yeah. didn't stand behind her. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I totally, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. And um, I didn't list all that. She did a lot of great things in Atlanta as well. Mm -hmm. Just wasn't important for her podcast. Mm -hmm. um, she kicks ass. So, and That's all. she, he liked her for that. Maybe. Well, on. You know, because she was. She was already doing it mm -hmm. when he met her. I respect that. So, you know, maybe that's how he met her. And he said, heck let yeah. Let her keep on keeping on. I like it. Um, he said, she gonna keep on keeping on. And she's a party girl. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. So, the reason I told their story, though, mm -hmm. to tie back into recent today. Um, well, either way, my feminist self is appreciative. Yeah. Just ending there, but tied in. Um, their estate, has, for a while was deemed a historical landmark mm -hmm. and there has been a bed and breakfast slash wedding venue mm. it's called the van landing ham i think that's their name it's so long okay the van handing the the <laughs> van landing <laughs> ham yes uh estate mm -hmm. uh and so in party venue mm -hmm. you know suitably so sure suitably so it works. I mean, yeah. So, uh, but he's there's been some trouble. 
hasn't been as profitable mm. as he would like. He hasn't been managed well. Well, it seems like he's tried different things. He junior? No. He senior. He Whoever runs it. Running it today. Current. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, he also runs another end, and it's successful. Okay. So I think just maybe placement. Uh, Need some better marketing tactics. Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, shoot, if I knew that kind of history, I'd be like, heck yeah, I want to go in one of the original American feminists' places to get married. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, like We he need tried, to go be his marketing yeah. team, because I'd well, be all about that. He tried some things, like uh, picnics mm-hmm. on days that it wasn't booked. Mm-hmm. Um, that went well for a little bit, but he was, and then he's trying to like divvy out some of the land to make townhomes. Uh, do like a pool mm-hmm. and like they all got turned down and then he he was allowed to do the town homes without the pool strange which seems weird yeah um but just recently he sold it okay for 1.5 mil hey um he sold it to Ascent Real Estate Capital and Stono River Partners. Oh no, that means they're gonna tear the whole thing down and make it a freaking so, community. But it's a historical landmark. Oh, so, I don't so know they that. can't. Well, <laughs> oh, no. Only me in suspense. Just tell me. We don't know. Um, the managing principal at Ascent, John Dixon, said the company wants to build on the property's history while providing for its successful stewardship in the years to come. So that didn't say anything. No, yeah, that said um, absolutely nothing. But so I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> um, he said that he also doesn't want to go out and get his morning paper and be known by his neighbors as the guy who tore the house down. Promising. So if if it's gonna happen, I don't think he wants to be the guy that you know yeah. runs the the bulldozer. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, so we need to go see it soon. Maybe. Don't just know in case, happen. just in case. Yeah, I don't knock I don't, on the door. Hey, I can we just walk around? It may be fenced off now or something. I mean, we could try. But just thought that was interesting. Um, found that in the Plaza Midwood. Yeah, I like Google that. News, and uh, I like that. I'm hmm. I'm all for freaking power women, especially even well before the twenties when it was yeah. a little more ex- a little more acceptable, you know. Rock on. Thank you yeah, for that. Yeah, and so, yeah, I just looked, I found that the house was sold, and I was like, oh, cool. This is a family name. Let me search it. Searched it, and was like, Frank so-and-so, Ralph, not Frank, Ralph so-and-so was cotton broker. And I was like, there's a story there. Dead end with Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Ralph. <laughs> well, Thank I mean, goodness it's, old it Susie is, was there. It is kind of hard. It probably dead ended for Ralph because Susie was yeah, such yeah. a name that it was like, well, he was probably a big, successful man himself. Yeah. But because Susie's success was so great, especially considering the time period that it was like, oh, he's just more of the same. Screw yeah, that. Yeah. Let's focus on her. And so he just... To a certain degree, was lost to history, but like you said, I totally agree that unfortunately, I, yeah. in that time, like without his approval and support, I mean, she wouldn't have been able to yeah. be. I mean, she still could have done it on her own, but in a married situation, yeah, if he had said no, like pfft, squashed, mm-hmm. done. So yeah, Van Landingham's estate. Mm-hmm. It's there, uh, the corner. Of what did I say? Um, Belvedere and the Plaza. All right. Still there. That house. We don't a little, have to just check a little that bungalow. Out. A little bungalow. I like it. Well, I'm going to take us to a little more tawdry. If I knew what that word meant, I would be like, yeah. Tawdry. If you're pointing here at the growler, I've already emptied it into our glasses. It's empty. Oh. That's it. We don't have two crowlers like we did last time. Oh, we should have done a half growler and a crowler. 
Or we so should have gotten a full one so I could use it as a water bottle. Cause so I guess I just toy. sit here parched while you're talking. I reckon. I mean, I've only got a sip left yeah. as it is. Okay. Well, continue. I reckon that's just how good Juicy J is. Must be why they won. Must be why. Uh... So, tawdry is scandalous, uh, bawdy. Um, <laughs> you can't describe a word I don't know with another word I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I can. <laughs> uh, but I still will not know it. Sexual, slutty, uh, not socially okay. acceptable. Okay, okay. Or like in the social outskirts type of thing. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to take us to, I guess, some other like female empowerment in a certain way. But okay. okay, so really what it started out was I was looking at a story that was another Plaza Midwood first. Okay. Which led into, which again, like zero information on. Yeah. Zero ever. information on. It's almost like sometimes. When like we're history tried stuff, to forget it. Yeah, it's like Charlotte doesn't have a history. Yeah. When we're looking stuff up sometimes. Yeah. It's like it just. That's All of a sudden, it was just here. We need to hang out in that Charlotte history room more and see what yeah. they've got in there because I think that's the only place the history exists. Yeah. But so I started out looking at this one thing that's a Plaza Midwood first, which led me into the person who kind of oversaw it, which led into a different Plaza Midwood first, okay. also perpetuated by the same person. Okay. And so I guess this kind of becomes more of a story about the person. And what he's done than the individual things. Okay, okay. But it's really less about him exactly and just the things he's done. So he is just the linking factor to two different things. So that it's are more about him than the things he's done, but it's more about the things he's done than him. Totally. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if we can follow along. All right. So we've got this man, and I'm going to butcher his name terribly. Okay. His name is Michael. Plumides, plumides, plumid, plum, plum, plumides. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna go with plumides. Plumides. Okay. plumides. Just call him Mike Plum. Michael P. Senior. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's a there's a Mike Mike Plum Junior. Yes. Okay. And so Senior uh, is a lawyer in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Plaza Midwood area. And okay. I believe it was 55. His brother, I want to say Thomas, maybe John. He wasn't the focal point of the story. Tommy John. Word. His brother uh, officially opened a law firm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's one of those that's four or five names in it. But it does have that. Was it Plum, 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 Plum and Plum? It was not, but Plum <laughs> is one of them. Okay. Um. Open a law firm and join forces with his brother a little bit later in, in the game. Okay. Law firm still active in the Charlotte area. Okay. I believe they are housed in Uptown at this point. But okay. It may have always been in Uptown. That's not the point. Michael P. was in the Plaza area. Okay. He has been described as flamboyant and a maverick in the law game. Okay. And he is responsible for Charlotte's first strip club, or Plaza mm. Midwood's first strip club. I'm not okay. quite sure about Charlotte in general, but Plaza's first strip club. It was called C'est Bon, which of course caught my attention because so it's, it's French. French. Mm -hmm. The title's French, <laughs> if nothing else. And did, he... Go ahead. Did they want... And to draw them like his French girls. If you just heard that click on the audio, that was me dropping my head <laughs> in shame and my hat hitting the microphone. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I mean, nothing is on record. Okay, okay. Perhaps there were advertisements that may have been printed and may have been drawn and copied. I don't know. Draw me like your French girls. But his name was not Jack. Oh. It was Mike P. Mike P. Mike Plum. Right. So, 
uh, he ended up in a very long legal battle with, I'm not sure if it was the city or the neighborhood or exactly how the it was set up region like set up. Yeah. At the time. Um, but basically Charlotte had a lot of really vague obscenity laws. And so he was trying to challenge them and ended up opening the strip club in the sixties, late sixties. I uh, could not find an exact year. Um, and was just like, yeah, let's do this. That legal battle was never resolved because in 1974, the establishment mysteriously burned down. I thought you were going to say he was murdered. No. He oh. actually died, I believe, in... I'm not sure if it was 94 or 2004. Um, or four. Sometime during our lifetime, he oh passed gosh. away. Maybe 97? I don't know. <laughs> I looked at a lot of dates. Um, okay. The 70... Like, the four might be from It Burned Down in 74. Hard mm. to say. So, mysteriously burned down in 1974. The interesting part is that there was 17 different businesses, mostly in the same style of establishment. That end, I mean, obviously not like this was the first, so they weren't all strictly this, but they were like just different clubs and night hangouts and bar, like kind of big picture similar avenue okay, okay. or maybe ones that weren't explicitly Nightlife. yeah maybe ones that weren't Nightlife. explicitly like a strip Nightlife club massage parlors yeah okay okay 17 of them burned down same night no <sighs> over a decent bit of time several i mean like same year like maybe not all of them in the same year but yeah there was um however however they could get to them yeah okay there have been discussions about possible mob connections with this kind of things. There was one man who owned one of the establishments who said he knew exactly who did it. The person who did do it confessed it to him, but said if he basically if you tell anybody, you're next. And so this man has been living in fear ever since with that they would burn down his own home and had no doubts that if he was in his home, he was going with it. That it wasn't just a matter of let me burn your property. It's I'm taking you out. Um, and so he only stated that on the record being completely excluded from the process himself. So we don't know who he was that said this. And he did not like say who it was that mm. told him this. So... This is a conspiracy theory. <gasps> what? We have come full circle. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, there was, you know, questions of mob connections. We've got people being, th I mean, people being threatened who do know what's going on and who are afraid to talk. Um, they, the police came out saying that they had uh, several very good ideas or like, you know, they basically, Suspects. they knew who it was. But they didn't have enough evidence to convict them. And anyone they talked to surrounding that were all too afraid to talk to the cops. Hmm. Okay. Which goes hand in hand with this whole mob connection thing. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Charlotte mm -hmm. Mob. I didn't. Maybe next week. <laughs> Maybe we'll actually get into the uh, Charlotte room and dig up some dirt. Um, but something interesting is of those 17 businesses that burned down... Four of them had some sort of connection to the Plum family. Two were direct owned establishments. Okay. One being Saint Bon. Mm -hmm. The other two, it didn't distinctly say, but because him and his brother were both lawyers, I suspect it has something to do with their like kind of legal connections um, or representation okay. of those establishment. Uh, so. That's kind of where that ends. Like, there's no real uh, information. Clips. They're all still unsolved. They basically, yeah, came out of it saying, these people did it. We just do not have enough evidence to collect to prove it, which also sounds very mob-like. Uh, and so they remain unsolved and unconvicted. So if you have any information, please call Plaza Midwood Neighborhood Watch. <laughs> at, I don't have that number. PlazaMidwood.org. We talked about last time yeah. has a neighborhood crime watch, so maybe report yeah. it to them. Yeah, send them an email. Okay. 
contact form, fill it out. If you are the man who knows who it was and he can confess to you and you're like starting to kick your own bucket, maybe this time. Okay. Okay. But Mr. Michael Plum Sr. is responsible for a second Plaza Midwood and I believe Charlotte first. He uh, shot or produced the first independent film in North Carolina. Say you're talking mobs. I'm burning I know, I'm things sorry. down and you said he shot. Well, well, well I don't think he's the first I don't think he was the first person to shoot something in North Carolina in the sixties, seventies. <laughs> he produced the first uh, independent film in North Carolina. Hmm. It is called The Night of the Cat. It was produced in 1973, and some have called it the worst film ever made. It's definitely the worst title (laughs) ever. Uh, It has been described as a cult classic and a sexploitation. And I did a little research, and I need to grab my laptop here. And... There is an IMDb for it. Unfortunately, there's not a lot on the IMDb for it. Okay. It exists as a page. It gives a full cast um, and director and that kind of thing. Director, writer, that. It gives a, um, a picture, like an image of whether it's a poster or like a VHS cover. I'm not really sure. I mean, a 73. Okay. I don't even know if in 70. Three, there were VHS. Probably just slides. I mean, I like I really don't know, uh, and I feel like that sounds really stupid to say, but it's Betamax. I don't know. So it doesn't give a specific um, synopsis or any of that. There's no photos. Uh, no trailer. No. Nah. No Rotten Tomato score. There is one user review. <laughs> okay. This uh, user gives a synopsis. Okay. Is this is this might be the third? It is not, but Mike P. the second is now a writer and film director himself, huh. and just finished producing a film in 2018. Um, let me go back to the videos. Oh, it, so the <laughs> I'm going to take us back for a second now that I've got my laptop in front of me. The law firm is Plumied, Romano, Johnson, and. Cacheris? Cheris? It's C-A-C-H-E-R-I-S. Okay. So it's P-R-J-C is what they kind of go by. Okay, okay. And they currently reside in on South McDowell Street in Charlotte. Okay. But they are still a thing. Hmm. Uh, however, uh, Michael G. Plumied Jr. is an author and a producer he recently won an award a saturn award not entirely sure what that is but he won a saturn award he i don't care about earth awards though he wrote a book he has been working on films his he's got an imdb imdb page for himself uh, where he just recently finished a movie as the executive producer called Ghost Trek Confederate Ghouls. Oh. Yep. So, blockbuster. That's the thing. <laughs> uh, it was finished in 2018. So, okay. like, very recent. Um, I actually, like, found him on Facebook. Because <laughs> in my Googling, uh, there is a... Facebook page called Bleeding Skull. I don't know exactly what this group is about. It's the mob. I didn't dare dive into it further. However, there is a post by Mr. Michael Plum Jr. Who, um, I guess this Facebook group has a blog or a website and had written a review of The Night of the Cat written by Michael Plum Sr. Or produced by Michael Plum Sr. And so he came on to their Facebook page to basically make a bunch of corrections to be put onto the IMDb page. Uh. And he was like, 
And so he specifically said, my father produced this. I know I was there. This was the budget. My father mortgaged our house to make this film. My brother did this part in the film. My mother did this part in the film. It was filmed in the house my mother still lives in today in Charlotte, North Carolina. Please add this information. Blah. Um, so that, that's all out there. Cool, cool. Uh, however. Yeah, that review. Yes. <laughs> it is something special. Because, of, of course, I have no idea what this film is about. So again, it's a review, bias, whatever. <clears throat> it is titled, Shoddy Regional Action Cinema at Its Best Slash Worst. <clears throat> Same but different. Yes. Blonde Beth gets, a hor- gets horrible news that her sister has been murdered by some mob types running around in Charlotte, North Carolina. She teams up. Yeah, I know. Mob connections already. Hmm. And this was produced a year before his place burned down, potentially by the mob. Hmm. So this is nonfiction. Maybe. True story. She teams up with a reporter named Tom, who tells her all about head honcho Mr. Demons' root, Mr. Demons's routine of getting girls hooked on drugs and then using them as prostitutes. Man owns a freaking... Uh, the first this strip is, club. This is a memoir. It is. <laughs> uh, his routine of getting girls hooked on drugs and then using them as prostitutes. Oh, Mr. Demons also has a phobia of cats. So Beth starts taking karate lessons, dyes her hair black, and decides to bring down Demons on her own. Kind of sounds a little bit like, uh, what's that, uh, Jennifer Lopez movie? Enough. Okay. Where she's like, all right, I'm going to. I'm going to learn to fight. I'm so going to change like what enough, I look like. And I'm going to take you out. But Catwoman. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, she decides to take him down on her own. I'm usually a big fan of regional action flicks, but this one is a pretty trying experience. Director Jim, S- I'm going to call him Sank. It's C-I-N-Q-U-E. So my French self is calling him Sank. Because C-I-N-Q is Sank. And that means five. So it's just a UE. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call him Sank. Do that. Director Jim Sank has a unique style in that he opts to tell the audience nothing 90% of the time and let you fill in the blanks. Seriously, Beth just shows up in one scene with her new look, and I had no idea who she was. I actually watched this again in fast forward just to make sure I got everything straight. The he's afraid of cats bit is rather funny. But it is never used in Demons' downfall. And it's called um, The Night of the Cat. Uh, In fact, there is one scene where he is terrified of a cat and then it is forgotten. Now, I get that Beth is supposed to be cat-like in her all-black getup. No thanks to Sank. But even that isn't capitalized upon. They couldn't add a who are you, I'm the cat type of scene. The director's shoddy staging is perfectly matched by his awful filming. The fight scenes in this have to be seen to be believed, and static shots will have edits in them moving characters' heads around. The film's sole highlight is probably a car chase, where it totally looks like the other drivers on the road had no idea a film was being made and thought they were seeing a real police chase. I wouldn't put it past Sank, for opting not to let everyone know. <laughs> and that's a review. That is the review. Did he give stars? How many stars did he give it? Yes. It says it right there. But it's out of 10, I believe. What? It looks like it's a f- it's 4 stars. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's 4 out of 10. Okay. I don't know why it's 10. Nonetheless, I really want to watch this film <laughs> to see what's going to happen. You go ahead. You ain't yeah. even seen Top Gun and you want to watch this. No. That's wrong. I'll watch Top Gun and then you'll watch The Night of the Cat with me. <laughs> we'll find a VHS tape, hot wire it to the computer. So nonetheless, Mr. Michael Plum Sr., mm-hmm. quite an interesting fella. Mm-hmm. Brought Plaza Midwood its very first 
uh, strip club. It's very first independent film. And the mom. And the mom. In a potential memoir fantasy Catwoman shenanigans. Okay. So okay. Um, I'm not quite sure what our uh, obscenity laws are in the Charlotte area these days. But um, they've been challenged. They've been mobbed. And they didn't stand because they all got burned to the ground. And that's it. I mean, there's not really an end to that story. He died, you know, yeah, yeah. a couple decades later. There was nothing really uh, noteworthy in that in-between time that I found. Mm -hmm. And his son has kind of picked up the torch, maybe not in quite an explicit way. Uh, but, you know, he's writing novels. He is producing movies. And, and one of them, at least, is probably in law. Because yeah. Because the law firm still has his name on it. That's true. Unless his brother is still alive, but I imagine oh, yeah. he would be quite old if that's the case. But who knows? But yes, so the, he's also, Mr. Senior is also part responsible for a law firm that still exists in Uptown. Nice. Cool. So, thank you, Ralph, Susie, and Mike Pond. <laughs> for keeping our town interesting. Keeping, keeping Plaza Midwood. The party place. Yeah. It's the party I mean. place. All right. Well, we're going to let y'all digest on that for a week and uh, want to come back to saying a big thank you to everybody who participated in the buzz bracket, who submitted brackets, who voted, who uh, helped promote different breweries. If you are a brewery and promoted. Yeah. It became bigger than we kind of imagined. Maybe not more than I wanted. But considering but, how quickly yeah. it came together. Did well. Yeah. Um, so we're really proud of it. We're very grateful for everybody getting involved. So big thanks. And we pretty much since day one saw plenty of places that needed improvement. And we cannot wait for next season because mm. we've got bigger and better ambitions for it. Um, all the way from who even gets picked into the bracket and letting you be part of that. And yeah, so make sure you stick around for all of that. Hang tight with us on social media, like follow, comment, subscribe, all the things to let us know how we're doing mm -hmm. and get those first updates as the voting starts for those preliminary rounds to even make it into the bracket. Yeah. So, do, I mean, don't leave us until next time. Right. We're going to still be doing stories as we go. Um, episodes will probably be getting shorter. Yes, which is actually probably um, a little to, better. Yeah, back to the original time frame. 45-ish. Yeah. And uh, maybe better stories we'll have. We'll have be able to dive deeper yeah, into yeah. stuff because we won't feel as time constrained with discussing the bracket matchups as well. Yeah. But. And more beer. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're going to learn to do full growlers now, so. So, thanks. But, yeah, so hop over to Legion. Uh, give them some love for being Charlotte's Best Brewery 2019. And it's expensive, but, man, this growler is a worthy investment. This is so pretty. I wish you could see it if you are uh, just listening to the podcast. But send them some love and uh, follow our social media because we... When we do present them with a golden growler, we're hoping to make a little bit of a thing of it. So maybe you can be there and hang out with us. Say what up. Yep. So. We will see you all next week. Check you later. Bye.